Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a dog. On New Year's Day this year, a video was uploaded to YouTube entitled Suppressing a Cure for More Than 40 Years. Berzinski, the Cancer Cure Cover-Up. Full documentary. I did initially think that it was a new documentary, but when I got to the end, I realised it was actually made in 2016. But it is a very slick movie. This video won't be remotely slick, but I do have a cute dog. The Cancer Cure cover-up movie is quite a long documentary. It actually goes for nearly two hours. And a lot of it appears to be devoted to covering a bunch of court cases involving Dr. Bozinski. My knowledge of the American legal system comes from watching episodes of Law and Order on TV, so I won't be commenting on any of the legal stuff in the documentary. However, there are a few scientific claims being made in the documentary, so I'll be having a look at them. And the first claim is made both in the title of the documentary and quite early in the documentary by Dr. Bozinski. And that is that Dr. Bozinski has a cure for cancer. Unfortunately, I can't show you the clip because the makers of the Bozinski movie have placed a copyright claim on it. So here's a picture of Cindy instead. Now, saying you have a cure for cancer is a pretty bold claim. There are, of course, a number of cancer treatments on the market, and depending on the type of cancer you have, some of them can be really effective. But no one other than cancer quacks has ever claimed to have a cure. And in this case, it is remarkably easy to prove that the claim is incorrect. All we need to do is look at Dr. Bozinski's own data. This is one of the patents that Dr. Bozinski has had issued. It has now expired, so anyone can use his treatments if they want to. He calls his treatments antineoplastons, which sounds very sciencey and very high tech. If you go through the patent, you will see that he provides a number of examples of clinical trials that have been done with his products. Here is the first. It says 43 patients diagnosed with primary malignant brain tumours were treated with daily intravenous administration of antineoplaston A10 at an average dose of 7.9 grams per kilogram per day and antineoplastin A21 at an average dosage of 0.3 grams per kilogram per day. Of the 43 patients, 36 were available and 16 achieved complete or partial responses by the completion of therapy without serious side effects. I don't know about you, but 16 out of 43 patients achieving either partial or complete responses doesn't sound like much of a cure to me. It could potentially be a treatment that is effective in some people, but to know that we would need to know what the response rate was amongst patients who didn't receive the treatment by performing a randomized controlled trial. And this has never been done for any of Dr. Bozinski's antineoplastin treatments. And there's reason to believe that even the lackluster results that Dr. Bozinski admits to may not even be correct. An audit of his records by the FDA found that patients had been deliberately miscategorized as achieving complete and partial responses when they actually hadn't. Here's another picture of Cindy instead of the original clip from the movie. She sure is cute, isn't she? The original clip explained that Bozinski's cancer treatment contained natural peptides that are present in higher amounts in people who don't have cancer compared with people who do. Wow, natural peptides. It sounds like a wonderfully safe way to treat cancer. Strangely enough, though, although Dr. Bozinski's antineoplastons 
do contain some peptides, one of the ingredients is the sodium salt of phenyl acetate. Phenyl acetate is not a peptide and it has been known to be toxic since 1919. If we go back to the peptides that are in Brzezinski's products, one of them is phenylacetylglutamine, which has been the subject of some research recently. Interestingly, in this study here, they found that patients who had higher baseline levels of phenylacetylglutamine were more likely to develop lethal prostate cancer, which suggests it may not be the best treatment for cancer. It is also important to note that Brzezinski's antineoplastons use the sodium salts of both the peptides and phenylacetate. This means that patients taking the treatments are exposed to extraordinarily high levels of sodium. Indeed, when the FDA audited Brzezinski's trial results, they found that a number of patients had excessively high sodium levels and not all of them were reported as they should have been. And even more disturbingly, some of the patients weren't removed from treatment. Now, some research into Brzezinski's products has been undertaken by other scientists with less than spectacular results. In fact, all the patients died. And this is also covered in the video. And here's yet another picture of Cindy. In the clip that I had to remove here, the movie makers claim that publishing the scientific study was vindictive and the authors were careless. It also features Brzezinski comparing the serum levels achieved in the study with the serum levels that he claims to achieve. I've never heard of publishing scientific results being described as vindictive before, but there you go. I've also never heard reporting serum levels being described as careless before. It's pretty standard practice to report stuff like this in scientific papers. But the thing that most caught my attention in this segment of the video was the differences between the serum levels obtained in the study and the serum levels that Dr. Brzezinski claims he has got with his patients. And the reason they caught my attention was because they were completely different to the serum levels that Brzezinski has previously claimed. This is a letter to the editor that Brzezinski wrote in response to the published paper. In his letter, he claims that he obtained levels of phenylacetate two times greater than reported in the study. However, in the video, he claims they are 2.7 times greater. In his letter, he claims that the levels of phenylacetylglutamine are 35 times greater in his patients, whereas in the video, he claims they are 36 times greater. And finally, in his letter, he claims that levels of phenylacetylisoglutamine, that's a mouthful, are 53 times greater in his patients than reported in the study. But in the video, he claims that they are a whopping 169 times greater. He also claims that seven of nine patients had no phenylacetyl isoglutamine in their system at all, when in fact the study paper clearly states that they only tested levels in two patients. So clearly his letter to the editor and what he claims in the video can't both be right. And perhaps neither is right. We have no way of knowing. What we do know, however, is that six of the nine people who were administered antineoplastons experienced toxic effects. So it wouldn't have been possible to give them higher doses. Now, the movie also contains quite a number of testimonials from Dr. Brzezinski's satisfied patients. 
I won't show you any of them because I don't want to single anyone out. And these are people who genuinely believe that they have been helped by Dr. Basinski. I will, however, share my own testimonial. It is a testimonial for the porridge that I have for breakfast. And when I say porridge, I don't mean the crappy instant oatmeal that you can buy from the supermarket. My porridge is a mixture of rolled oats, bran, psyllium husks, berries, and cinnamon. Several years ago, after visiting a radiologist for a routine ultrasound, I received this rather distressing letter. And the blackout bits are just the address and other details of my doctor and me. The bit that particularly distressed me was the following. There is a 27 millimetre slightly ecogenic and fairly well-defined space-occupying lesion in segment five of the liver. Therefore, multiphasic CT scans were performed and it demonstrates a well-defined lesion which enhances greatly in the arterial phase but is poorly opacified soon after the portal venous phase. Thus, it is not typical of any hemangioma and an mRNA scan is suggested for further evaluation. Now, I was really worried when I read this, so I committed to having my special porridge mixture for breakfast every single day. And the good news is, when I had my last scan, the tumour had completely disappeared and I was cancer-free. Now, everything I have just told you is completely true, but I did leave out two important pieces of information. The first is that I never had cancer, so it's not surprising that I am now cancer-free. I had an unusual-looking tumour that needed investigating, but it turned out to be totally benign. Furthermore, although I did commit to eating my special porridge mixture every single day, this wasn't a new behaviour. I have been having porridge for breakfast since I was a teenager. It's very yummy and very healthy. Of course, it was quite unusual for my tumour to disappear all on its own, but these things do happen and they do also sometimes happen in people with cancer. It also sometimes happens that people are misdiagnosed with cancer. What appears to be cancer on a CT scan actually isn't. And finally, sometimes conventional treatments can take a while to work. So the results of a conventional treatment can be misattributed to a new treatment. Something else to consider, especially for people with brain cancers is what is known as pseudoprogression. Pseudoprogression is temporary progression of tumours that can occur following radiotherapy or chemotherapy, which then reverses after a period of time. If these patients take Brzezinski's antineoplastons during this time, they could falsely attribute their tumour shrinkage to his treatment when in fact it is a well-known phenomenon. The other important thing to remember is that people giving testimonials are not necessarily representative of all patients. In particular, dead people can't give testimonials. Patients of Bozinski who are willing to give testimonials can be found on the Bozinski Patients Group website. There are a total of 72 patients on this website, but as you can see, not all of them have survived their cancer. These 72 patients willing to give testimonials are out of a total of over 10,000 patients that Brzezinski claims to have treated. So they are a very small proportion of his total patients. There is also another website called the Other Bozinski Patients Group, which details a number of former Bozinski patients who weren't so lucky. 
This site is dismissed by the makers of the Brzezinski movie because they claim they aren't able to verify the information about the patients because their full names are not given. However, the website also provides links to the original sources of the information. So if you do look it up, you can obtain the patient's full names. Cindy sure is cute, isn't she? The clip I had to remove here was about Ignis Semmelweis, who was the first doctor to recognise the importance of hand washing in infection control. He discovered this after noting that women giving birth were more likely to develop infections if their babies were delivered by doctors than if they were delivered by midwives. The big difference between the doctors and the midwives was that the doctors were performing autopsies and the midwives weren't. Unfortunately, very few people were willing to listen to him at the time. The story about Ignis Semmelweis is true but it has no relevance to Brzezinski. Contrary to the claims being made in the video, breakthroughs in cancer treatment are made regularly and new products are brought to market. The claim about the money involved is true, however. Brzezinski allegedly charges at least $30,000 a month per patient for treatment. I've just scratched the surface with this video. If you'd like to look further into the Brzezinski story, I'll provide links in the video's description from other people who have been combating his misinformation for a long time, including cancer surgeon and researcher, Dr. David Gorski. I'll also provide links to the data that I've presented so that you can look further into them as well. And please remember this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And as I've mentioned a number of times, you don't even have to leave a nice comment. You can leave a nasty comment. You can say how annoying it is that I won't keep my hands still. I mean, this is so annoying, isn't it? How can you concentrate? I don't know. But feel free to comment about it and let me know, okay? But the other thing is I would, of course, like to thank everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future, so if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.